here to share about how the power of God changed his life. Please welcome Daz Chettle. I used to be a, uh, I used to be a hairdresser, believe it or not. How cool is that? Hey, I'm just going to share my heart for a little bit, and, uh, and I just want you to get this. I was just in the worship. I just, I just want you to get this. The name Jesus is not a name just in an ancient book. The name Jesus is the most powerful, almighty name in the world. You see a sick person, you lay your hands on them in the name of Jesus, they will get healed. We're seeing people getting healed. We're seeing people getting saved in the name of Jesus. It's so good, man. We need to get this. You know, I got invited to a meeting, a little like this, really. It was heaps of men, like a lot of men. And uh, I did a, because I'm a drain layer, so I was doing a drainage job. And uh, the lovely 80-year-old man that I was doing the job for said, hey, I'd like to invite you to a meeting. And I said, that'd be cool. And he said, I'll go and get Smoko and I'll come back. So he comes back with Smoko about two hours later. And, uh, and his wee hands were going like that and half the drink was all over the floor. But it was okay because he said to me, you've got to come to the meeting. And I said, yeah, what's the meeting called? He said, hey, you've got to come to the meeting. And I said, yeah, what's the meeting called? He said, well, we're Freemasons. I thought, whoa. (laughs) I said, yes, I'd love to come. So I go along to the Masonic Lodge and uh, to meet these lovely businessmen, you see. So I'm sitting in a meeting like this with 150 Freemasons. And uh, there's checkerboards everywhere, there's candles. And this man gets up and he's standing behind a desk like a school desk. I didn't really love school but that's okay. And so he he opens the Word of God. He opens the book of Isaiah, and he starts reading it. And as he started reading it, I just felt the presence of God. He's so good. And when we go into a dark place, we're the light of the world. So I stood up in this Freemason hall, and I said, excuse me, guys, I don't want to disrupt your meeting. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ changed my life. And I was just about to unpack my story. I was just about to tell them what happened. And I found myself in a headlock. And the lovely 80-year-old man that invited me was punching me in the face. And he's punching me in the face. And then I found myself in a scrum, a Freemason scrum. That was interesting. And, uh, and then they lift me up, and I'm on a, like a magic carpet ride, really. I'm going this way and that way and this way and that way. They throw me out on the street. I've got tears rolling down my cheeks. I've got blood coming out of my face. And I said, guys, I just wanted to tell you that Jesus loves you. You know, what would possess someone to stand up in a Freemason hall and present the gospel? I'm so glad you asked. I wasn't brought up in a Christian home. You know what? I can remember as a six-year-old boy, I was sitting on my granddad's knee, struggling with dyslexia. He pushed me off his knee, and he said, you are thick, just like your father. And I believed that lie. I believed that I was thick because I couldn't read the words on the page. So I'd go to school. Hello, I'd get the reports back. You're fail, fail, fail. And I believed that lie that my grandfather sowed into me. Men. What lies have you believed? I want to tell you the devil is real, and he's a liar, and he hates you. What lies have you believed? My whole life, I believed this lie. So I thought, well, I need to do something with this hurt heart. Drugs! Let's do drugs! So I'd get high, 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 and then low, low, low. What about sex? Let's have sex with heaps and heaps of girls. Heartbreak, disease, pornography. It was horrible. Drinking, praying. I would do anything to fill that gap. But nothing was working. So a friend of mine die. Sorry, I saw a friend of mine die and I thought I need to get out of here. I jump on a plane and I leave New Zealand. I was getting partying all around Aussie. One Sunday night I went into this church. I actually went into the church to meet some chicks. <laughs> or get some food. I don't mind food. You may have noticed. My wife and I are working on that. <laughs> and my mentor's here, Brian from Kaikoura. We talked about that last night. Darren, the little pig. Anyway, <laughs> so we went in to meet girls and to have some food. So I'm sitting in the service. 
And I'm watching these Christians, and they're putting their hands up. Hello. I was thinking, what are they doing? When's someone going to answer their question? For standing like that. There was a lady with a flag. She was running down the church like this with a flag. Hello, it's church. It's not a Crusaders game. So I'm watching this and I'm going, this is weird. This is not my gig. This does nothing for me. I just want the service to be over so I can start tuning the chicks. Okay, it's okay to be real, eh? So as the preacher starts preaching, he said this. He said, Jesus was a shepherd and he left 99 sheep to go and find the one. I thought to myself in that moment, would he ever come and find me? Get ready for some good news. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, there's some good news coming. (laughs) So in that moment, I'm contemplating that in my carnal mind, but God started touching my heart. I felt this warmth going up my arms. I was going far out. What is this? This is amazing. I started crying, and I'm going to tell you, I was a cool, tough guy on the outside. In the inside, I was a broken, insecure little boy. And God was touching that heart. This physical warmth came up here. I start crying. I'm blowing snot over the lady beside me. Got a wee bit awkward. I was making such a scene that the preacher stopped preaching. That doesn't happen often. The preacher stopped preaching and said, Sir, you need to come up the front. I went, there's absolutely no way. I don't even want to be in here. I'm not going up the front. My mind was telling me these lies. You're not going up the front. But it was like God had lassoed my heart and he started pulling me up the front of that church. I could stand in front of the church. I don't even know the prayer that I prayed, prayed, but I do know that night changed my life forever. That night I had an encounter with God. You know that word encounter is to accidentally bump into. I accidentally bumped into God that night but he never accidentally bumped into me. He's so good, and he loves you so much. The word that I, when I'm on the streets in malls, I went to a mosque on Thursday night, presented the gospel in the Dean's Ave Mosque. I want you to know Muslims need to know that Jesus loves them. He's not some prophet that's waiting to come back. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we need to get out of the boat. We need to get out of our comfort zone. And we need to start being a light to the world. Because it's not the evangelist's job to go and win the lost. It's the evangelist's job to motivate you to go into the world and be Christians. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. Love you. Woo!